All right. So this is the assignment that uh, we, we I gave uh, last time. And then there are three, consists of three uh, assignments or three exercises, where the first case, you have to call, we consider this SIR model with vital dynamics and constant population, uh, where SI and R are susceptible, infected, and recovered population classes. Of course, this model uh, is also used to, is what we use to work on COVID transmission cases and a lot of diseases as such. Um, and also we give, and these parameters are defined, and then we give initial conditions uh, for S to be zero to, of zero to be 100, the infected initial condition is eight, and then the recovered population, the initial number is zero. And then the second exercise uh, was on predator prey models. Uh, this example is like a relationship between um, foxes and, and sheep. Uh, or lions and deers in the forest, um, where we have a predator and a prey. Here also, we have defined all these constants. They were given an initial condition of two and one over a time period of um, zero to 50 days. And then uh, some in MATLAB usually have to give uh, this uh, initial condition, uh, initial step size, but it's not necessary in octave environment. And the third exercise, was to develop a UCC grader where students can just, uh, a function that will just take students' uh, scores and then display whether they did, they got an excellent, they got A or a B plus and stuff like that. So I'll start with, um, with the first exercise, which is the SIR model with vital dynamics. And here you could see that we have the DSDT equation, the IDT equation, the RDT equation, and so these are the constant parameters that were needed. Uh, so we have a function yp, which is the output, and then the function name is sir, and then the inputs for the function is the time, uh, the state variables y, the lambda, mu, beta, and gamma, which are all constants as well. And then we write this uh, output yp to be equal to, so we use a square brackets, here we use a square bracket and then in each, so we write the first the SDT on in one line. So here we use Y1, Y2 to represent the state variables and Y3, okay? Um, and then we write equation one as lambda minus mu, you can see S which is Y1 minus beta I which is Y2 times X. So times S, which is Y1. So you can easily see it. And then I put a semicolon and then the IDT comes onto the next line. So I put a, the IDT also onto the next line. I put a semicolon and then I put the, uh, the RDT to the third line as well. And then I close my bracket. So these are three uh, equations that we are considering. All right. So to run it, uh, we write a script in the script. We, I say clear all, which is to clear the workspace, uh, and then uh, CLC, which is to clear the command window. And then I define the parameters, which were already given. So mu was given as one over seven, beta was given as one over three, gamma was given as one over 10, and then lambda was given as 10 times the group number. And here I'm using group number 20. Then we gave the time span. The time span we said use from t is equal to zero, t to be zero, and then t to be uh, 50. So this is a time span into brackets, uh, square brackets of zero and 50. Then we said the initial conditions we gave. Uh, this is the inits. Uh, so you see that the init here is, consists of S0, I0, and then R0. So these are the initial conditions that I state them here. So S0 here is 100, I0 is eight, and then R0 is zero. Then I call the solver. So there are a lot of solvers. There's OD23, 45, 23S, and so on. So to call the solver, we know the output we are looking for. We are looking for the time, and then each time the corresponding Y. So the OD23, then brackets, open at SIR. So this SIR is a function that we wrote here 
that we are now calling. And then the T span is the time span that we are working in, the zero to 50. Then the initial conditions follow. So this, uh, this is how you must write it. So the initial conditions then follow. So the initial condition is this guy I in it, which follows then your constants, your parameters, lambda, mu, beta, gamma also then follows as well. Okay, so what we said was that we need to see plots. So we here, I'm using subplot 2, 2, which means uh, on, on the same figure, make a two by two plot, which is four, fig four, four plots within that same figure. So subplot 2, 2 means you two by two uh, figure on the same plot, uh, on the plot on the same figure. And then position one, which is the first plot, what you should do is plot C against Y, but you see that the, the Y here uh, is, uh, is a matrix form. So the first column of that matrix corresponds to the S, the S, cla the S class or the S compartment. So here I say plot T against the Y and then the first column of Y, which is the S compartment, okay? And then plot, use the width of the line to be true and then make it blue, use dash dash. And then the second, make also a plot T against Y true, the column, second column in Y, which is the I compartment. Use a red color line with two, and then also plot T against uh, the third column of Y, which is the recovered compartment as well, and then do the same thing, okay? Then we give it a title, we give the plot a title. The title of the plot is time series plot for SIR model. We give it a legend. So the legend is what shows, uh, which is corresponds exactly to the, 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 see the logic here. So T, T, Y1, it takes Y1 and says it's susceptible. Uh, Y2, it says it's infected. And then Y3 as a recovered. Then we said in the exercise, you should plot uh, X against Y as well. So here we plot, uh, we plot time, no, we plot the time, sorry, plot the time against X. Uh, against your susceptible class, and then time against your infected class, infected population. Okay, and then here make a plot as well. Uh, time against against your recovered class. All right, and then you give it the name trajectory and then the infected and then population class as well. So we go ahead and run. Uh, if we run the script, then um, we see uh, a figure that shows up. So we see that uh, exactly what we expected. We said um, in, in, in this case, plot two, subplot two, two, one, plot the time against Y1, and use a blue color, right? And then plot the time against Y2, use a red color. Plot the time against Y3, use a green color and put it at position one. So you see that subplot two, two, position one. Here we have that plot there. The title you can see here is given by time series plot for SIR model is what you see. And then the legend is susceptible, infected, recovered. It tells you, yes, susceptible is for the first, the blue one, infected is the red one, and then recovered is the green one. Then we went ahead and said plot time against uh, susceptible uh, and plot this in your sub, you sub plot two second position. So here, if you come here, you see plot T against uh, Y1 or column one, which is the S, and then use blue color. And then you can see that this is the blue color is trajectory, the title is trajectory of susceptible population. See the trajectory of susceptible population. And then this, this one is the position three. And then if you go there, we say plot um, T against the I and use red. 
And then the title is trajectory of infected population and you can see it. And then the last one is plot the time against a recovered class, use green color, and then the trajectory of the recovered population. You can see this. So uh, if you can do this, then this is exactly what, uh, if, you, if you did it correctly, this is exactly what I expected uh, of, from your solution as well. Okay, so with that, uh, we end the uh, exercise one. For exercise two, uh, what we said was it was a predator prey model, if you could remember. And then we said this was a lot cover of Terra model. Okay, this was a lot cover of Terra model. Uh, so here we said the X, so you can see there's almost the same thing. Is a, so the ODE, you write it as a function in this way. And then you write the x dt is given by that, dy dt is given by this. And then these are real values, also parameters that are given. And your equation, your model itself is yp is equal to, so you can also see in this case that the x dt, I write it uh, in one line, separated with a semicolon. And then dy dt, I write it in the next line, separated with a, and then I, and the square brackets, and then I put a semicolon as well then to end it. So this is actually the whole function for the predator prey model. Now to run it, to run it, we need to then write a script that will, that will say, okay, the same thing that as we did previously, uh, clear all the screen, uh, clear all the workspace because we don't need those variables there. We don't want replications and then clear the command window. We want the clean start. Define your parameters, A, B, C, D are defined here. You can choose whatever just to play with it. And then the time span again here in the other, uh, here we also choose zero to 50 days. And then the initial conditions were given, uh, we were given two and one as initial conditions. Uh, you can either use a comma to separate them or you can also leave them like that. Just a space is enough. And then you call the ODE solver. You can call ODE 2345. Usually the solver depends on whether your problem is stiff or non-stiff, but this is not what I want to talk about now. So your solver to call it, uh, you need the output should be time and then your Y, okay? And then you call it again, ODE 23. You use at predator prey, which is the function that we have written here. Okay, at predator prey. And then you call your time span, your initial conditions, and then your parameters. And then you close your brackets. So next, we want to plot the time against the X and then the time against the Y on the same plot. Okay, so here you can see we have subplot two one. So subplot two one means just two figures in one, two plots in one figure. So uh, position one, the first plot, what we want to see is we want to see a plot of the time against y, column one, which is the x, the s part, and then y or the pre, and then the y on the, on the, the second one is the time against the y to the, the y, okay? Okay, so uh, here we give it a title, time series plot of predator pre model. The legend is pre and predator. And then the next plot, we plot uh, y, x against y, and we make it a green color, and we call it a face plane plot, okay? So here we go ahead and we run it as well. And if we run it, we should expect, uh, I expect that you will get something like this, okay? You get something like this. So this is a face plane plot, and then this is the predator pre model. Uh, you can see if, if the predate, if the if if you have an example of uh, foxes and sheep, if the sheep are increasing in number, then the foxes also begin to grow. If then the, if the sheep begins to go down in number, then the foxes also begin to go down in number. And this is how usually the, the behavior goes for this predator prey model as well. So if you saw something like this and also something like this in your as solutions to your work then you did really the right stuff. All right, then finally, uh, the third exercise was a UCC grader. 
okay? So the UGC grader, I just want the student to the, the, see how you can play around with if else, uh, else if conditions, uh, loops. And then also, of course, you can also write the same thing with switch case commands. And then, but here I'll just limit ourselves to the very basic ones of them. So the UCC grader, the function UCC grader takes as an input number, okay, num, I call it. Then I say, if the number is greater or equal to 80, display A, then write A arrow excellent pass. Else if it is between 75 and then 79, display B plus very good pass. Else if it is between 70 and 74, display B, which is good. Else if it is between 65 and 69, display C plus, which is average. LC in that manner, exactly as a UCC uh, great student. Of course, here, the last one, you don't have to write an else if, you just have to write else. So that's the last condition, uh, display E. And then here is a fail, but I just decided to make a play with, uh, with the work. So I say, what a shock. Okay, so here we can test this. Uh, if we go to the command window, and then we say UCC grader, and then we put the 82, we expect an excellent pass in UCC for 82. If we get uh, 72, we expect good from you. If you get 62, we expect fair result as well. If you get 52, it's a weak pass. And then if you get 42, it's a fail. Right here you see, we have what a shock. Just to demonstrate, um, that this is how um, the the what well, this is what I expect to see. Uh, so of course you, maybe I don't you can do anything, but in the end we should see that UCC grader is working perfectly fine. All right. So thank you very much, and I I, I you get the next exercises later.